Okay, so after a week-long recess, the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard defamation trial returned this week to see a major change in dynamics. Headed up by Camille Vasquez, the Amber Heard cross-examination really got into the nitty-gritty of Heard and Depp's relationship, as well as the external things about their case that cast a lot of doubt over her credibility. In our first breakdown of the trial, we talked about how lawyers are very much representative of the person that they're hired to be on the side of. For example, Depp and Heard's marriage counselor discussed how Amber would talk over Johnny in the sessions, and because of this, he didn't really have a voice. Throughout his testimony, Amber's team kept objecting whilst he was recounting their time together, and at points they would constantly interrupt him. We talked about how this could plant the idea in the jury that the stories about Depp were true, and how he didn't have a voice. This week, Depp's team definitely took a strategy that subliminally helped them out with the cross-examination by having Camille go first. She had very quick-fire delivery in which she talked about a topic, get the answer that made her look like she'd been lying, and then move on to the next topic. At some points, it just seemed like a bombardment of rapid-fire questions, slowly unraveling her statement, and I think having Camille do this was the best way to go about it. It's very easy to seem sexist when talking about this trial, and I know myself that I've had to basically try and second-guess what I'm saying because it could come across in a certain way that basically derails the whole video. So, very clever to just avoid this all right off the bat, and have Camille do the initial cross-examination. Now, there were also some discrepancies in the finalising of Heard's testimony that made people on social media question whether she'd been sticking to the rules. During the recess, it's illegal to talk to one's counsel in order to straighten out certain elements of a story. However, Heard and her lawyers start off the final statement in her testimony by correcting a lot of dates and errors. It did appear like they'd gone over the internet and possibly tried to correct mistakes, which might be something the jury consider when coming to a decision. There was one point where she was off by an entire year in terms of dates, and it did unravel several parts of her testimony. I am trying to stay as unbiased as possible when making these videos, even though I do have my leanings over who's telling the truth, and I think it's impossible for anyone to say 100% that they know exactly what happened. That's why when Amber's testimony dropped, she did get a lot of support online, but I think these corrections actually did her a disservice, as there were so many that it makes you question what else she was wrong about. Now we're going to play the main highlights of the cross-examination day one, and whilst this is going on, let me know what your thoughts are. Camille brought up a lot of her testimony, and then would show photos of her the next day, and ask why she looked uninjured. There was even a point where she talked about how in her statement she'd said that Depp severely bruised her back, and then showed a picture from a premiere the next day in which she was wearing an open back dress. It really brought a lot of things into question, and it culminated with a $7 million charity donation Heard claimed to have made. She also threw her legal team under the bus at one point and brought up how evidence she'd submitted hadn't been brought into the trial, and the two-hour questioning had a lot to unpack from it. Bear in mind, the first part of the audio also comes after Amber publicly accused Johnny. Mr. Depp hasn't looked at you once this entire trial, has he? Not that I've noticed, no. You've looked at him, though, many times, haven't you? Yes, I have. You know exactly why Mr. Depp won't look back at you, don't you? I do. He promised you he would never, you would never see his eyes again. Isn't that true? I don't recall if he said that. One of the last times you ever saw Mr. Depp was when you met him in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? That was the second to last time I saw him, yes. And this was after you had publicly accused him of domestic violence. I got my restraining order before that, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is after you had obtained the domestic violence restraining order against him. That's correct. Let's please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 1229. Oh, no, a hug will save it all. Just, all this, no, no, all this, wanted, everything I just we just wanted, I, I just wanted to touch you. Seriously. Really? After all this yes, you just said? I just wanted to give you a hug. Yes, 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 please, me. please stop. Please stop. Please, I just wanted to hug you. Please say bye. I didn't want to get any better. We did that last night. It's fine. That was good enough. No, because I'm nothing to you, and I will always be nothing to you. Come, come, you're not my shrink. No, no, we'll never see each other again. You won't even let me. Don't take my f***ing glasses off. You know, life. You look at it's not my f eyes, you will not see my eyes again. Yeah. 
And he tells you, you will not see my eyes again, doesn't he? Uh, yes, he does in that recording. And he kept that promise, hasn't he? As far as I know, he cannot look at me. He won't look at you, right, Mr. Hurd? He can't. One of the first questions your counsel asked you on direct is, why are you here? Do you remember that? I do. Let's please play plaintiff exhibit 357A, which is already in evidence, Your Honor. And for the record, it's 2122 through 2140. See what the jury and judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp, man, I'm, I'm a victim too of domestic violence. And yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. And see how many people believe or side with you. That's your voice on that recording, right? Yes, it is. And you were speaking with Mr. Depp? Yes. And you said to Mr. Depp, quote, you can tell, you can please tell people that it was a fair fight and see what the jury and the judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, a man, a victim too of domestic violence, end quote. That's what you said, right? I was saying it to the man who beat me up, yes. This was um, opiate Johnny. This is a different version of him. This is opiate on the nod Johnny. And you weren't afraid that opiate Johnny or the monster as you called him would get upset that you sent this picture to your friend? Well, he's all of those things. He, of course he could get upset. Of course that's scary to me, of course. But didn't stop you from sending this picture to your friend, did it? Why would it? So in this October 2018 interview, you said that you had, quote, donated, end quote, your entire divorce settlement to charity, right? That's correct. And in fact, your exact words were, quote, seven million in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, end quote, that's, right? That's correct. I made that statement as soon as I got a divorce and we reached the settlement. That's when I pledged it right then. And you say this because you, quote, wanted nothing, end quote. That is correct. But you hadn't donated your entire, entire $7 million settlement to charity at that point, had you? That's incorrect. Sitting here today, Ms. Hurd, you still haven't donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. Isn't that right? Incorrect. I pledged the entirety no, of Ms. the Hurd, settlement, that's, $7 that's million to question. charity, and I, Hurd, I intend to Ms. fulfill Hurd, those obligations. Ms. Hurd, that's not my question. Please, what try was to question? answer my question. Sitting here today, you have not donated the $7 million donated not pledged, donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. They but the I same don't, thing. Ms. Hurd, I don't use it synonymously. That's how donations are paid. Ms. Hurd, respectfully, that's not my question. As of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the ACLU, yes or no? I have not yet. You had all of the $7 million for 13 months before Mr. Depp sued you and you chose not to pay it to the charities you pledged it to. Is that I, correct? Ms. I Horst? disagree with your characterization of that. Most of the money that was donated to the ACLU and CHLA in your name came from someone else. Isn't that right? I don't know what you mean by most of. Well, at least $500,000 that was donated to the ACLU in your name wasn't paid by you, right? Uh, I believe Elon made a donation in my honor on one of, you, one of the years. Yeah, and it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement, right? No, nor did it count towards my pledge. And at least $500,000 that was donated to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles in your name wasn't paid by you either. Right, those were made at the same time. And it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement. Nor did it count to my 3.5 obligation. Those $500,000 payments came from your new boyfriend, Elon Musk, right? Uh, he, I don't know if he was a new boyfriend at the time. You got him to pay part of what you promised to these two charities, didn't you? Incorrect. Because you wanted to keep at least some of the $7 million divorce settlement for yourself, right? You're very wrong about that. So lots of things to take from that and the difference between pledging a certain amount and actually donating it 
really brought into question whether she was doing this entire thing for her public image or because she actually cared. On top of this, Amber confirmed that her part in Aquaman 2 had been severely reduced. She said that she initially had quite a big role, but as things got out, such as the leaked audio and images of Depp injured, that this became diminished. Heard said she received revised script pages that cut down her part, and it lines up with a report from Grace Randolph last week that she now has 10 minutes of screen time in the film. The petition to have her removed from the movie also just passed 4 million signatures, and it's clear that this trial has really affected the public and industry perception of her. Interestingly, Amber's language also changed from her testimony. Initially, when she was going through things with her own lawyer, she would firmly state, this happened. However, this altered to become it felt that way when she was questioned in the cross-examination. Huge shout out to the YouTube channel Legal Bites for explaining the difference in this and why it's called a partial in law. Rather than being something that can now be confirmed, we are viewing the statement through the eyes of how Amber felt about it. You're probably better off watching actual lawyers over me, but let me know below if you think this alters the impact of her testimony, as I know there's definitely several sides at play here. Now Camille in day two kind of changed the pace of a bit, but it was still as effective. She ended up getting Amber to admit a lot of things, brought up her statement, and made her contradict herself. This completely broke down the witness statements we'd heard in the trial so far, and it went over the numerous accounts by people that saw her uninjured after she said she'd been badly hurt. It brought up the police officers and also James Franco, which Amber confirmed came over to her house. Camille played the video twice, letting Amber very much set herself up in a trap. She also denied that the op-ed was about Johnny, even though she spent a lot of time in her testimony going through the ins and outs of their relationship. This also revealed that Amber hit Johnny the night of her 30th birthday. Weirdly, she also testified that two of the same images were taken at different points of the day, even though, as Pam Beasley would say, same picture. Now, the second part went over Amber's reduced role in Aquaman 2 and how it was difficult to say whether public perception had made this change. I think it's pretty clear it did, but Warner Brothers kind of seem like they're playing both sides by keeping her in, but not really giving her a substantial role. On the opposite side of this, Johnny was fired instantly, and we heard last week from Richard Marks how Hollywood had a no-tolerance policy to actors who were accused during the Me Too movement. I think that if she's found guilty, they might remove her altogether, and remember, this is a studio that reshot about 50% of Justice League through Joss Whedon, so I don't know how difficult it would be to redo 10 minutes. This was clearly her trying to hammer home that her career had been affected as much as Johnny's, but we discover that she also had contracts with L'Oreal. Ms. Heard, you're not aware of any career opportunities that you lost as a result of Mr. Waldman's statements, are you? Well, it's kind of hard to point to the jobs you're not offered, right. to the gigs you don't get. You were not replaced in Aquaman 2, were you? They released me from my contract, and I fought to stay in it, and they kept me in it. I just don't know how much I'm in, actually, of the final cut. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal actually extended your contract in April of 2020. Is that correct? In part. They extended and it and held me. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal extended your contract again in November of 2021, correct? Not exactly. They extended it because it couldn't use me or any of the materials uh, for me. And that extension was for 20 months, right? That's correct. This is from March 26, 2021, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And this is after he made the statement you claim, the statements you claim are defamatory, right, Ms. Hurd? 21, yes. Ms. Hurd, you tweeted at Adam Waldman, quote, Yes, Mr. Waldman, I may be wearing makeup on this occasion, but on every occasion you will still be short. Did I read that right? Yes. We can put this down. Thank you. Ms. Hurd, since your relationship with Mr. Depp ended, you have completed your level three sommelier training, haven't you? I haven't completed it yet. You're I just on stopped. level two? No, I'm on level three. You also have had a baby, right? I have. And you enjoy being a mother? More than anything. You still love to cook? I do. And you love to hike? I've taken a break on hiking for a minute. You have friends, right? I do have friends. And you spend time with those friends? Occasionally, when I can. And you exercise regularly? Every day. You just filmed a movie in March of 2022, isn't that right? Yes, the one I just shot in Guatemala that I spoke of earlier. And you have, um, you had a major role in a major film that's scheduled to be released soon. Is that correct? Aquaman 2? As I said, I don't know if I 
will even be in the final cut or how much I will be. It was difficult to stay in the movie. Now, one of the main criticisms about Amber's testimony and cross-examination online has been that she seemed quite arrogant and smug throughout. That's kind of why I think the Waldman tweet was brought up, and though it's not really that bad of an insult, well, I don't think it is anyway, it's more Amber's delivery and reaction to it that I think Camille was trying to bring up. They're very much trying to show the jury the kind of personality that she has, and these tactics are all used by the lawyers to put a certain idea into their heads. Now, the James Franco CCTV footage is also something that has appeared online for a couple of years now, and it was used to say that Amber had been cheating on him with the actor. Throughout the trial, it's often been said that a lot of Depp's anger came from accusations of cheating, which her denied. We'll play the clip now, though, and you can let me know below what you think of the situation. You testified yesterday that you sought a temporary restraining order on May 27th, 2016, because you wanted to change your locks. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Those locks were to the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia building, isn't that correct? That's correct. But you changed the locks to the penthouses on May 22nd, 2016. I attempted to. That's why you felt comfortable having James Franco over the evening of May 22nd, 2016, Ms. Hurd? I do not know when, I do not know when James came over. Okay, let's remind you. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 304, which is already in evidence, and play from 254 through 439? That's you and Mr. Franco on May 22nd, 2016, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And you're taking him up to the penthouses, aren't you? That's where I lived, yes. And it's past 11 p.m. at night, isn't that right? I'm not quite sure of the time it looked, it looked like that. Why don't we pull that video back up? Twenty two fifty one. Almost midnight, right? That's, um, or, oh, excuse me, almost 11 o'clock at night. Exactly. Okay. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town the week of May 21, 2016, didn't you? I don't know what I knew of his schedule at the time. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town on May 27th when you went to get the domestic violence restraining order. Isn't that right? I don't know if I knew that at the time. You knew, you knew Mr. Depp was heading out on a European tour that week. Isn't that right? I'm not quite sure what I understood of his schedule at that time. You knew he wouldn't be back for weeks, right? No, that's incorrect. Let's uh, go back to that recording. Now, a big thing in the trial is who was the person actually behind the physical violence and Amber has been caught on tape admitting that she lost it with Johnny. This was put to her in the trial and they also asked why her interviews with lawyers had a completely different demeanor to what we saw on the stand last week. This is something that many people have brought up and there's even videos playing these two speeches side by side so you can see the difference in delivery. Heard has been accused of delivering her testimony like a performance because the world is watching and she's trying to convince the jury of what's gone on. 
Camille Vasquez posed why she was smirking and completely different when discussing this matter in privacy. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 356? I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I sometimes get so mad and lose it. I can promise you I'm going you know, to do everything to change. I promise you I'm not going to go around divorce. I will not say divorce unless I leave you. Unless it's it. And then I hope you leave me. I'm not going to. And me too. I will leave you. It's fair. I can't do it. You know? And I think... Honestly, if we hold each other accountable to that, it's fair. Mr. Heard, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, correct? That's correct. And you told Mr. Depp, quote, I can't promise you that I won't get physical, end quote. Correct? That, that's correct. He was and accusing me of instigating something in a situation I explained yesterday. And you also told Mr. Depp that sometimes you get so mad you lose it, correct? That's correct. I also explained the context of that fight yesterday. Isn't that exactly what you told Ben King on your way back from Australia? That you get so mad you lose it? Absolutely not. I know that that's what Ben King testified to, but I never had that conversation with Ben King. I remember hitting you as a response to the whole thing. Smiling as that audio recording is being played in your deposition, aren't you, Ms. Heard? Not smiling because of the audio. I'm smiling because of what's happening around me. You even roll your eyes at one point, don't you? I was sitting opposite a whole table full of lawyers who were snickering, laughing, and rolling their eyes at me while I was talking. Is there something amusing about kicking a door into your husband's head? No, I was rolling my eyes and commenting on what I was experiencing at that time in yeah. recounting the story. Is there something amusing to you about punching your husband in the jaw? That is not what I was smiling about, and no, I do not think it's amusing. Now, the other main accusations that have been lobbied at Heard is that she's following the pattern of a toxic person that went out of her way to ruin Johnny's life since their divorce. There's an old saying of when a toxic person can no longer control you, that they'll try and control people's perception of you, which is pretty much the basis of this defamation case. Depp is stating that Heard's op-ed ruined his reputation career and public perception, which he has denied. The marriage counsellor came forth and said that Heard had posed the question of whether it would benefit her more if she was the one who did the accusations first and also got ahead of the divorce. It's been stated that Heard wanted to get it out in the public that she had a restraining order against Johnny for his abusive behaviour, which this next clip plays into. This would hypothetically boost her career whilst leaving Depps behind. There have been theories that Heard spoke to TMZ as things were filed so that they would break the story on it, giving her an advantage and further defaming him. Camille then posed the evidence of potential slip-ups to Amber in the cross-examination. This swaps halfway through to Amber's lawyer in the video, and it goes through the allegations that Amber was also abusive to her previous partners. Ms. Hurd, did you send a text message to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016, telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach Johnny. It's extremely important. Please tell him. I remember sending the text message that is in front of me right now to Jerry. Uh, and I would like, I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him Basically, I didn't want him to find out online that I had or was about to file or I had already filed for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally. So I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry from me so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. You slipped up there, didn't you, Miss Heard? 
You let it slip out that TMZ had been alerted to your filing of the domestic violence restraining order, didn't you? I disagree. That's not what I'm talking about. TMZ is the same outlet that you released the video of Mr. Depp attacking the kitchen cabinets the day before this deposition was taken, wasn't it? I didn't do that. I don't TMZ know how to do that. TMZ owns the copyright to that video now, doesn't it? I have no idea what TMZ owns. Did they owns. pay you for that? I never got paid for it because I had nothing to do with that. So TMZ was just lucky in getting the inside scoop to your divorce from Mr. Depp, huh? I have no idea. It is not, that's not my area of exp expertise. I wouldn't even know how to do that. And also, what does that get me? If I wanted to leak things about Johnny, I could have done that in a much more successful way, in a bigger way, for years. Not when years. you were extorting him for $7 million? I got a fraction of what I was entitled to in the state of California, by the way. Right. What extortion? Tossa Van Ree is your ex-wife, right? That's right. She's my ex-partner. She's the one that told, that you told this jury Mr. Depp was jealous of, right? Yeah, well, that was a 2013 fight in, around March, yes. You testified that he tried to burn one of her paintings, right? That's correct. You testified he tried to burn um, one of your favorite paintings that she did, right? I don't know if it was one of my favorites. You committed domestic violence against Miss Van Ree during your relationship, didn't you? No, I did not. You assaulted her at a Seattle airport in 2009, didn't you? No, I did not. And people saw that? That's not true. And it was covered in the press. Isn't that true? It was, a, it was planted in the press by Johnny's team two days after I got the TRO. Ms. Hurd, did Ms. Van Ray come out? After that article came in to make a public statement, it was false? Of course. Yeah. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I, Your Honor, I should at least be Over, overruled. Thank you. Of course she did. Okay. Now, let's talk about the TMZ alerted. Explain to the jury what you meant by the TMZ was alerted. Uh, so when you make these kind of filings, meaning divorce, uh, marriage, things like that, they are public record. And so when we filed for divorce, when I filed for divorce, I asked my team to file in the most discreet way, literally to put it under a stack of papers and file it at the end of day. So kind of had more of a shot of being missed by the paparazzi and by TMZ and those sorts of publicity outlets. I believe that we had been remarkably lucky following the divorce that it wasn't picked up and that it gave me a, a precious few days um, of, of, of peace at that really fragile time. When I found out that they were going to run the story or that they had the information, I was trying to get a hold of Johnny to clarify that I did not do this in a punitive way. I didn't want him to be mad at me. I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to find out in that sort of context online. Why did James Franco visit you on the evening of 5-22-2016? Mm. Objection calls for speculation. Do you know? Yes. Please tell us. Because he was my friend and he lived next door, quite literally next door. And I had frankly exhausted my support network with my usual friends and was happy to welcome as much friendship at that time as I could possibly get. Now, the video showed uh, him laying his head on your shoulder. Can you describe for the jury what the interaction was, without saying what was said, what the interaction was that led to that? He, uh, after seeing my face, put his Objection, head Honor, on my calls shoulder. calls for speculation. That doesn't call for speculation. If she sees that he, he sees her. He, he yeah. touched no. the side of my I'll face, too. I'll sustain the objection. And, and okay. Again, Your Honor, if we can instruct the witness. If to you could wait till after the objection, please. All right. Next what, question. What did Mr. Franco do uh, on the elevator before laying his head on your shoulder? He you know, touched the side of my face and responded. Now Hurd's lawyer Elaine ended up not even getting all her questions out at the end as objections came in quick and fast and overall she barely got any of her actual questions out. Huge shout out Asmon Gold for putting together this reaction to it and you should definitely check out his channel as he's got much more steady updates on it than I do. Maybe objection your honor, lack of foundation. Okay. Alright I'll sustain the objection, next question. And do you, what if anything did you produce to the plaintiff in connection with your consultation with an ENT specialist She's about to do it. relating to your nose. Objection, leading, Sustain. What, I foundation, said, what anything, hearsay. What, what if anything that Jeez. you off is Bro, this is... What if any production did you make 
to the plaintiffs of your medical records with the ENT? Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. If you have foundation. Do you know whether the records, medical records, oh my uh, God, from your EMT were produced in discovery. Objection, in this case. Your Honor. Lack of foundation calls oh for speculation. Oh my God! I'm, just, I'm, I'm asking. Overruled if she knows. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Great. We've made progress. Yes. And do you rec do you recall? I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, what, if anything? Man. Did the medical records reflect about your nose? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Do you have injuries to your nose? Yes. Please describe those to the jury. Oh, okay. Now we're back I into have, fan uh, fiction. I'm going to object to scar to the, tissue. I'm going to object to the extent it calls for hearsay and lack of foundation. Oh, She's overruled. And improper expert opinion. Well, I, we'll she can certainly testify to. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Go ahead. Okay. We'll see where it goes. Go I have um, a significant amount of scar tissue in my nose. Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. I don't have any more questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. All right. Ma'am, you can have a seat next to your attorney. Okay? Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Three out of 100 questions accepted. Yeah, exactly. That was terrible for them. That was really, man, that was bad. So overall, pretty rocky start of the week. However, Heard did have a witness come forward in her defense, but I want to save that for the next recap we do, as this is based purely on the cross-examination and opening. Lots of things to discuss, and I had to cut things out too, just to keep the runtime of this video lower. Let me know what you thought below, and as mentioned, I did think that it was a pretty full-on attack on Heard's testimony that poked a lot of holes in it. I think the main issue that Heard is running into is that she has several people saying that they never saw any injuries on her. This includes female police officers, which is probably the kind of thing that Depp's team want on the jury's mind as it rules out the sexism angle and also holds up that people in authority have questioned her stories. Really interesting evolution of the case, and we will of course be back probably either Monday next week to discuss about the updates, so make sure you subscribe, and also if you haven't checked out our other videos, then they will be linked on screen now. Thanks for watching the recap, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.